Hey guys, this is Caleb with the Command Valley bringing you another deck tech out of Kaldheim. I'd like to take a quick second and thank this channel's sponsor, that is GameGrid Lehigh. You can check out their new and improved online store and support our channel while doing so by simply clicking the link in the description below to their website. We will also have a deck list for this deck in the description that you can copy and paste into their deck builder to buy any of the cards that you see in this video or all of them. And to support our channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley and sign up today. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Today we'll be talking about Taralf, God of Fury, and this deck is called Ride of the Lightning and you will see why. So Taralf, God of Fury, costs 2 and 2 red. He's a 5-4 legendary creature god. He has trample, and he says, Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Taralf deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. This ability is super useful for burn decks, and that is what we are going to be brewing today. So for example, if you were to cast a spell that deals 3 damage to all creatures, and you have Taralf on the board, and your opponent has a 1-1 one, one, and a 4-4, four, four, you would deal 3 damage to both of those creatures, there would be 2 excess damage from the 1-1, one, one, and you could deal the rest of it to their 4-4 four, four creature to kill the creature, or you could deal it directly to your opponent's face. So you can see how if your opponents have a ton of creatures out, how powerful board wipes that deal damage can be, which is what this deck is mainly going to focus on, because the more creatures they have, the more excess damage you'll be able to deal, and the more damage you'll be able to deal straight to your opponents, and Taralf is going to be really good for doing that. Also, Taralf is a modal dual-faced card, on the other side it is Taralf's Hammer that costs one and a red. It's a legendary artifact equipment. And it says, equipped creature has pay one and a red, tap it, unattach Taralf's Hammer, then it deals three damage to any target, then return Taralf's Hammer to its owner's hand. The equipped creature also gets plus three plus zero as long as it's a legendary creature, and it equips for one and a red. So. The main focus of this deck is going to be on Taralf's front ability, but his hammer is also really good in the early game if we absolutely need to use it as a spell to remove troublesome small creatures or utility creatures that our opponents are getting lots of value from. So both sides are really good, but like I said, this deck is really going to focus on Taralf's ability to deal tons of excess damage, hopefully to our opponent's faces, to end the game with lots of fire and lightning. So before we get into the meat of this deck and how we're going to deal our opponent's creatures and our opponents a ridiculous amount of damage, Let's talk about the ramp that this deck needs. I've put a lot more ramp into this deck than I normally would because we've got some really big X spells that are going to deal a ton of damage. So I want to get as much mana as possible as soon as possible. And some of these cards are just temporary ramp, which we'll talk about in just a second. But, but let's start off with the mana rocks such as Arcane Signet, Commander Sphere, Fire Diamond, Mind Stone, which is great for drawing us a card if we need one, Ruby Medallion that discounts all of our red spells, Soul Ring of course, Thought Vessel, Wayfarer's Bobble, and Worn Power Stone. As for what I was calling Temporary Ramp, we have Iron Crag Feet, which for 1 and 3 red will add 7 red to our mana pool, but you can only cast one more spell that turn after you cast this, which is totally fine because we're most likely going to put all of that mana into, like I was saying, a huge X spell to deal tons of damage, like Earthquake. Along the same lines, we've got Seething Song that costs two and a red and is an instant that will add five red to your mana pool. Mana Geyser, which costs three and two red, and it will add red to your mana pool for each tapped land your opponents control. So this thing could potentially be absolutely insane if you're casting this and all of your opponents are tapped out and they all have five mana, or access to five mana like you do, then you're going to get 15 mana out of Mana Geyser. It's absolutely fantastic. I don't, I'm not guaranteeing that it will always be that good, but you're gonna get a lot of mana out of this if you're playing with three other players. And last but not least, we've got Koth of the Hammer that costs two and two red. He's a Planeswalker. 
and he comes into play with three loyalty counters. His plus one ability lets you untap a mountain and it becomes a 4-4 red elemental creature until end of turn. It's still a land, so you can get access to one extra mana that turn. Just be sure that you don't activate this on a turn that you're wiping the board with our huge X spells. Alternatively, you can do his minus two to add one red to your mana pool for each mountain you control. This can potentially get you a lot of mana, perfect for those big X spells. And one of the great things about Koth and being in a deck where you're going to be constantly destroying and burning all the creatures on the battlefield is you're going to most likely have the chance to do his ult, which is also pretty good. You get an emblem with mountains you control have tap this land deals one damage to target creature or player. No one will ever complain about that unless you're super far behind. Otherwise, this is a super good emblem. All right, next, let's talk about the draw and card advantage cards in this deck. We've gotten a lot of really good impulsive draw cards in red lately. That's when you get cards off the top of your deck, but they're exiled and you can play with them. And if you don't, by the end of the turn or by the end of your next turn, they get exiled. So we've got some of those as well as cards like Cathartic Reunion that let you discard cards to be able to draw more cards. So Cathartic Reunion costs one and a red, and you also have to discard two cards to cast it, but then you get to draw three cards. Along the same lines, we've got Faithless Looting, Thrill of Possibility, Tormenting Voice, and Wild Guess. These cards will all allow you to discard a card or two cards to draw more cards. So if it's super early in the game and your hand is full of these big X spells that I keep alluding to, and what you really need is ramp, playing a wild guess and discarding one of those huge X spells to draw two cards is going to be really good for you. Next, we've got one of my favorite cards from Commander Legends. It is Jessica's Will. It costs two and a red. It's a sorcery that lets you choose one. And if you control your commander as you cast the spell, you get to choose both if you want. The first option is add red for each card in target opponent's hand. Drawing cards and having lots of cards in your hand is something that every single commander player wants to do. So you can bet that when you play Jessica's Will, you're going to have at least one opponent, most likely playing blue or green or both, that will have a lot of cards in their hand. So you can potentially get a ton of mana from this. And then the next option is that impulsive draw that we were talking about. You exile the top three cards of your library and then you can play them this turn. So this not only gives you the ability to impulsive draw, it also gives you the mana that you need to be able to play those spells. It's awesome. I would start including this in every single red deck. I'm also playing Reforge the Soul that costs three and two red. It's a sorcery that makes each player discard their hand then draw seven cards and you can also miracle it for one and a red and a miracle is you get to cast this card for its miracle cost when you draw it and it's the first card you draw that turn so essentially what you're going to do with reforge the soul even if you can't miracle it is keep it in your hand until you've played all of your other cards and then when this is your last card you don't have a hand to discard and you draw seven cards this is a super good card. Next, we've got Valakut Awakening that costs two and a red and is an instant. And it says, put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. So this isn't really getting you more cards, but again, it's being able to have that selection that's super helpful, especially if, like I said earlier, you get stuck with cards that you want later in the game and what you really need is ramp. Valakut Awakening is a really good way to do that as well. And if you're not looking for this type of ability, you can also choose to play it as a land. These modal dual face cards from Zendikar Rising have been so, so good. So definitely include this in your Turalf deck. Next, we've got another card from Zendikar Rising, which is Valakut Exploration. It costs two and a red. It's an enchantment with landfall and says, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. 
So you play a land, you get an impulsive draw. Then it also says at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard, then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. This card is awesome. Not only does it give you the impulsive draw that, that Red has been getting a lot of, it says, okay, if you don't like the card that you get from your impulsive draw, and it's not a land, then you get to deal damage equal to the CMC to the rest of your opponents. This card is awesome. And last but not least in this section, we've got Wheel of Misfortune. Not as good as Wheel of Fortune, but, but definitely more fun than Wheel of Fortune. Like Wheel of Fortune, it costs two and a red, it's a sorcery, and it's got a whole lot of text, but basically everybody chooses a number, then everybody reveals what number they chose, then the person who chose the highest number gets that much damage dealt to them, then each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hand and draws seven cards. Usually there will be at least one person at the table that doesn't want to give up their hand and they're going to choose zero. So you can almost always guarantee that just by taking a little bit of damage, you're going to be able to get the effect of Wheel of Fortune or Reforge the Soul and draw seven new cards. Next, let's talk about interaction, starting with the targeted removal in this deck. We've got the classic Lightning Bolt to deal three damage to any target. We've got Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast. Both of these blasts are able to counter target spell if it's blue, or you can destroy target permanent if it's blue. Trust me when I say that if you play in a playgroup like mine, you are going to want to run these cards. If nobody in your playgroup plays blue, then keep them tucked in the sideboard for when you go to your LGS. Eventually, hopefully, when all of this is over, then you can side them in. Because trust me, you are going to want to run Pyroblast and Red Elemental Blast in this deck. Then we've got Scred. Scred costs one, it's an instant, and it deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. Spoiler alert, all of the mountains we're playing in this deck are going to be snow covered mountains. Now with Call Time Out, they should be a lot more accessible, and I would suggest picking up as many of the snow covered lands as you can. So this is a super good way to, on turn five or six or seven, deal five or more damage for just one red. It's a super good rate. The last card in this section is Vandal Blast. It costs one for a sorcery that destroys target artifact you don't control, or you can overload it for four and a red to destroy all artifacts that you don't control. All right, now we're going to start getting into the meat of this deck, which is big damage spells. Starting with Hour of Devastation. It costs three and two red, it's a sorcery, and it says all creatures lose indestructible until end of turn. Hour of Devastation deals five damage to each creature and each non bolus Planeswalker. This is a great way to take out some of those old gods. This is a really good card for getting around one of the main weaknesses in this deck, which is indestructible creatures. Though we honestly don't mind indestructible creatures as long as we're dealing them a lot of damage, but those cards can also tend to be really menacing and annoying. So if you need to get rid of an indestructible creature, Hour of Devastation will be there to help you out. Next, we've got Inferno that costs five and two red. It's an instant that deals six damage to each creature and each player. Something that you will notice with the majority of the board wipes in this deck that deal damage to creatures is that I've, that I've also chosen as many as I could that will also deal damage to players because ultimately we're not here to destroy our opponent's creatures, we're here to destroy them. And you're playing red so you don't mind taking a bit of damage as long as you can burn your opponents as well. That is what it means to be a red mage. Next we've got Mizium Mortars that costs one and a red and it deals four damage to target creature you don't control or you can overload it for three and three red to deal four damage to each creature you don't control. This is a really good way to deal tons of damage to your opponent's creatures without killing Tarolf, which is one of the main problems in this deck and something that we will address here in just a minute. 
let's talk about the X spells in this deck that are sure to deal a ton of damage to our opponent's creatures and to them. Starting with Earthquake, a classic that costs X and one red. It's a sorcery that deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. Along the same lines, we've included Fault Line, Molten Disaster, Rolling Earthquake, Shatter Skull Smashing, which again is another one of those modal dual-faced cards that can be played as a land if you need it. And last but not least, Star Storm. I know what you're thinking, we're missing a few really big ones, don't worry, we'll get to them toward the end. Now, one of the things with this deck is I'm honestly not sure if I've included too many of these spells or if I haven't included enough, and it's probably going to vary with your playgroup, depending on your playgroup and depending on if they play a lot of creatures, if you can make them have a lot of creatures, which is what we're going to talk about next. So I've included a lot of cards in my sideboard if you go check out the deck, um, there are a lot of cards there that you can switch in and out if you feel like you've got too many board wipes, because again, we've got a couple more to talk about towards the end. So go out, test this deck. I haven't had the chance to test it or play it. So let me know in the comments below if you think we're running too many of these, not enough of these, etc. One of the very first things that I thought about when I started building this deck was playing against people like Landon in our playgroup who oftentimes doesn't even play any creatures and if he does they're very few and they're not even for combat purposes. He does have some combat decks but if I'm playing this deck against Landon there's a good chance that I'm not going to be able to deal him a lot of damage with these spells because he's not going to have creatures. So, we've got a few ways that we can just give our opponents creatures in order to deal them tons of damage with these huge spells and Tarolf's ability. The first one, and honestly probably my favorite out of all of these, just because I think it's hilarious, is Acorn Catapult. It costs four, it's an artifact, and for one and tap it, it deals one damage to target creature or player. That creature's controller or that player puts a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token onto the battlefield. I do wish that this was a little bit more efficiently costed. It seems like a lot to have to pay for and then only be able to give your opponents one creature per turn and you have to pay an extra one every single turn. But trust me when I say you're going to want this card in this deck because people are going to choose not to play creatures when they know that you've got Tarolf on the board and a huge board wipe in hand. That's, that's what people are going to do. They're going to play around this deck by not playing creatures, so giving them squirrels is exactly what you want to be doing with Acorn Catapult. The next card is also an artifact that costs four, and that is a Crowan Horse. It's an artifact creature horse, a 0-4 with Defender, and when it enters the battlefield, an opponent gains control of it. So you choose which of your opponents gets it. Then it says at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a 1-1 white soldier creature token. So as soon as you play this creature, it goes straight over to your opponent's control. And then while they've got it out, then at the beginning of each of their upkeeps, you and the rest of the players that don't control a crone horse are going to get a 1-1 soldier. I never ever thought that I would put this next card into a mono red deck but here we have forbidden orchard it taps to add one mana of any color of your choice to your mana pool then whenever you tap it for mana target opponent creates a 1-1 colorless spirit creature token this card is normally run in three or more color decks so it's super weird to see it here in a mono red deck since you're just going to be tapping it for red but it's going to feel so awesome when you keep giving your opponents 1-1 one, one spirits and then you completely destroy them with that excess damage using Tarolf's ability and the huge X spell board wipes that we've talked about. Next we've got Goblin Spymaster that costs 2 and a red. He's a 2-1 with first strike and at the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player creates a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token with creatures you control attack each combat if able. All I can really say about Goblin Spymaster is I think it's going to surprise you when you play it. <laughs> He's really good. He's awesome. Have fun. 
Next, we've got a card from Alliances, Varchild's War Riders. It costs one and a red. It's a 3-4 with Trample so far. Super good. Rampage 1 and Cumulative Upkeep put a Survivor token into play under target opponent's control. And that token is a 1-1 one, one red creature. All right, so we've got some weird abilities on this creature. First, let's talk about Rampage. Rampage is whenever this creature becomes blocked, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature blocking it beyond the first. So if your opponent blocks Varchild's War Riders with two creatures, it's going to get plus two, plus two. The next ability is Cumulative Upkeep, which is at the beginning of your upkeep, you put an age counter on that card with Cumulative Upkeep, and then you sacrifice it unless you're able to pay the upkeep cost for each age counter on it. And in this card's case, it is putting a 1-1 red survivor creature token onto the battlefield under an opponent's control. And that is going to be a really easy thing to pay. <laughs> So you're never going to have to sacrifice this because you're always going to be able to pay that cumulative upkeep. It's just that every single turn that you have Varchild's War Riders out, there's an additional token that you have to place. And they all have to go under the same opponent. So if you're up to five age counters, you can't split those up. All five have to go under the same opponent's control. But then next turn, you can, of course, choose somebody else. And our last card that is going to give our opponent's creatures is Varchild, Betrayer of Keldor. It costs two and a red for a 3-3 legendary creature, Human Knight. And it says, whenever Varchild, Betrayer of Keldor deals combat damage to a player, that player creates that many 1-1 one, one red survivor creature tokens. We've got a little bit of a theme going on here with Varchild. Then it says survivors your opponent's control can't block and they can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. Then when Varchild leaves the battlefield, gain control of all survivors. Again, these cards are for giving our opponents creatures when they refuse to play them because they know that them having creatures is vital to our deck's success, at least mostly vital. So. That is why we've included cards such as these, such as Forbidden Orchard that can tap for any color even though we're playing mono red. Get those creatures out, give them to your opponents, and then wipe them off the face of the earth. Next, let's talk about some cards that will protect Turalf, not only from our opponents, but also from ourselves. First up, we've got Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots. These are the classic shoes that both cost two. Lightning Greaves gives Equipped Creature Haste and Shroud, and it equips for zero. Swiftfoot Boots gives Equipped Creature Hexproof and Haste, and it equips for just one. These are perfect for giving Turalf not only haste, he is a 5-4 with Trample, so don't forget that, but also really good at making it impossible to remove him with targeted removal spells such as Path to Exile or Swords to Plowshares. Next, let's talk about protecting Turalf and our few other creatures, we're not running very many in this deck, from our own deck. We're playing a lot of spells that are going to wipe the board, so let's give our creatures indestructible or protection from red using cards like Dark Steel Plate. It's an equipment that costs three, itself is indestructible, and then Equipped Creature has indestructible and it equips for two. Next we've got an interesting one that is called Mage Bane Armor. It costs three to play and then Equipped Creature gets plus two plus four and loses flying but you get to prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to the equipped creature. So any damage from our earthquake type spells or from Inferno are going to do zero to whatever creature is equipped with Magebane armor. Then we are running three of the swords of X and Y. We're running fire and ice, sinew and steel, and war and peace. All three of these swords will give the equipped creature protection from red and another color as well as plus two plus two. And then they've got abilities for when the creature that is equipped with them deals combat damage to a player. The second deck that I ever built was a Jaya Ballard Task Mage deck and she runs a lot of these same cards that give her protection from her own abilities. So I know that these work and they work well, 
um, you're definitely gonna want to play them in your Tarolf deck if it's anything like this one. Moving on, just real quick, we're going to talk about the two tutors that I've included in this deck. They will help you grab uh, these protection from red or indestructible cards if you need them, or in the case of Goblin Engineer, any other artifact. He costs one and a red. He's a one-two Goblin Artificer that when it enters the battlefield, you search your library for an artifact card, put it into your graveyard, then you shuffle your library. So yeah, it's not good so far. It goes straight into your graveyard, but you get to pay one red, tap him, sacrifice an artifact, which is unfortunately most likely going to be a mana rock with the way this deck is built, but you get to return target artifact with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Honestly, you could also just do this to grab a better mana rock, um, but most likely you're going to be using it to grab a sword or grab the mage bane armor, um, and then give up a mana rock to be able to get that quickly. You've also got Gamble that costs just one red. It's a sorcery. You search your library for a card, then put that card into your hand and discard a card at random. So don't play this when you have no cards. <laughs> play this when you've got a lot of cards in your hand so that you can grab something that you really need and then take that chance that is just so red player like you gotta take that gamble, it's called gamble, and possibly lose that card that you look for. Next, let's talk about the funnest part of this deck, or the second, or at least the second funnest part of this deck, which is making more damage happen. And we're going to do that with creatures such as Brash Taunter and Stuffy Doll. Brash Taunter costs four and a red. He's a one one that is indestructible, but whenever he is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. So if you cast an X spell that deals seven damage to every creature and he is dealt seven damage, it's going to deal another seven damage to whoever you want. Also, if one of your opponents is playing some crazy Voltron deck or some huge Stompy deck and they've got a 10-10 or an Eldrazi or something, you can have Brash Taunter fight that creature for two and a red, then you tap him, and then any damage that gets dealt to Brash Taunter in that fight is going to be dealt right back at your opponent. Stuffy Doll is very similar to Brash Taunter, but with a few differences. It is an, it is an artifact that costs five. When it enters the battlefield, you choose a player. It, like Brash Taunter, is indestructible, and when it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to that chosen player. You can also tap it to deal one to itself. Obviously, both of these are fantastic cards in the deck, and they're going to end up doing a lot of damage. Especially when you play cards like Dictate of the Twin Gods, or Furnace of Wrath, or even Fiery Emancipation that are all enchantments that double or triple the amount of damage that gets dealt by stuff. And last but not least, we've also got Torbrand Thane of Red Fell that costs one and three red. He's a two, four dwarf noble. And he says, if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. So this is going to make all of our big damage board wipe spells a lot more efficient by adding that extra two. He will most likely die to a lot of those if he's not equipped with one of our protection equipments, but getting this bonus just once with your opponent's boards completely full of creatures can win you the game. And speaking of winning the game, here are the cards that are most likely going to win you the game. I told you that there were a few more board wipes we had to talk about, and if you haven't already been yelling at me in the comment section, where is Blasphemous Act? Where is Star of Extinction? This is where they are. They are in the section of cards that are most likely going to win us the game. Blasphemous Act deals 13 damage to each creature. It looks like it costs nine, but it actually costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. So potentially you'll be able to cast Blasphemous Act for a lot cheaper and dealing 13 damage to each creature while Tarolf is out. And especially if you've been giving them 1-1 one, one Squirrels and 1-1 one, one Spirits and 1-1 one, one Survivors, this is going to end the game. If all your opponent has is three 1-1s one, and you play Blasphemous Act, you're going to deal them 36 damage. That is most likely the game. And obviously, it's the same for Star of Extinction, which when you cast it for 5 and 2 red, 
You destroy target land, then it deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. This is the best card in the deck. It's for sure gonna win you the game. If your opponents have creatures, this wins you the game. And just to be sure it wins you the game, go ahead and play the enchantment Repercussion for one and two red. It says whenever a creature is dealt damage, Repercussion deals that much damage to that creature's controller. So Repercussion is here to help us out if Taralf keeps getting destroyed or just double up on Taralf's ability to deal excess damage to our opponents. It doesn't exactly do that. So let's say that we're back in that scenario where your opponents have three one ones and you have Taralf and Repercussion out and you play a card that deals six damage to all creatures. It will deal them enough damage to kill them. Taralf will take the 15 excess damage and deal it to that to those creatures controllers. And then with Repercussion, you'll deal another 18. So this card gets super nutty, super fast in this deck. You cannot run a mono red EDH deck without representing Chandra. So we've got a few Chandra cards in here. The first one is Chandra's Ignition. It costs three and two red. It's a sorcery that says, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. This is our very last damage dealing board wipe in the deck. I know that I've listed a lot of them. And like I said earlier, if it feels like you're running too many of these while you're playing this deck, it's probably my fault. I put a lot of them in here. Switch them out for some cards that I have listed in the sideboard. Or if there aren't enough, maybe there aren't going to be enough, add some more. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know how it works out for you. I just wanted to bring up Chandra's Ignition because it is the last one in this deck and I just wanted to and I just wanted to make that point one more time. The number of these cards in this deck is probably really flexible and especially depends on the amount of creatures your playgroup plays. Moving on, we've got Chandra's Incinerator that costs 5 and 1 red. It's a 6/6 six, six elemental creature but it also costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. We're going to be dealing a lot of non-combat damage to our opponents, so you are most likely, at some point in the game, going to be able to cast this for close to nothing, and if you need to cast it for its full cost, it's really good anyway. It's a 6-6 with Trample. And last but not least, it says whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, Ralf. Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So basically, Chandra's Incinerator and Taralf just keep the damage rolling between themselves. It's a pretty ridiculously synergetic card in this deck. If you're going to play Taralf and you're going to play it this way, you absolutely have to play Chandra's Incinerator. It's a, it's a must-have in this deck, period. The last card we're talking about is Chandra Awakened Inferno. She costs four and two red. She is a planeswalker that comes into play with six loyalty counters. She cannot be countered and she has three abilities. Her plus two says each opponent gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep, this emblem deals one damage to you. Her minus three is Chandra Awakened Inferno deals three damage to each non-elemental creature. So again, another damage dealing board wipe and then she has a minus x that deals x damage to target creature or planeswalker if a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn exile it instead so the main mode on chandra is you have wiped the board your opponents don't have creatures or you've just played a ton of ramp and it's the early game you get chandra out with little to no opposition and you plus two the crap out of her. You give your opponents an emblem that deals them one damage every single turn, every single turn another one, and another one, and another one. Then you can play some of those enchantments that double or triple your, your damage. The ones that would work in this case are Furnace of Wrath and Dictate of the Twin Gods. Anyway, this plus two ability just gets absolutely nuts because you're going to be able to kill anything that your opponents play and try to deal with her. And those emblems don't go anywhere if she dies. And the very first turn that you get her out, she is going to eight loyalty, which is so much loyalty on a planeswalker. I love this card. I think it's really underplayed. I want to play it in more of my decks. It's a little bit slower. You're not going to play it against your opponents that can win on turn five. 
Uh, you're not, you're most likely not even getting this out until turn five, but for a casual deck like this one, I think that this has got to be one of my favorite cards of all that we could include. Last but not least, let's talk about the lands. It's super simple. We've talked about the modal dual faced cards that are lands, and we've also talked about Forbidden Orchard. After that, we're playing Ancient Tomb, Command Beacon, and Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. And after that, we've got 32 Snow Covered Mountains. Should be super simple. I'm sure that there are utility lands that you could add to this deck, but for now, that's all I've got. That's what I'm going to be testing the deck with. I'm super excited to play this deck. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be a garbage fire deck. I don't know if it's going to be the funnest deck I've ever built. So definitely let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you would change. Let me know if you think I'm running too many of these cards that deal damage. I don't think I am. I think I'm right at the perfect spot, but that might just be due to my play group. But anyway, I am super excited to give my opponents spirits and survivors and then completely wreck them riding the lightning with Taralf. For those of you that made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Be sure to check out and sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley and support us directly there. You get to view exclusive content early. You get to hang out with us on the Discord channel. We've got merch that we're sending out. We've done a line of Command Valley play mats, and we're going to start getting into possibly t-shirts and hats, most likely the t-shirts first. Anyway, there's a ton of cool stuff that you can go check out on our Patreon. We super appreciate and love all of our patrons. We especially love hanging out with them on the Discord. Thanks again to GameGrid Lehigh for sponsoring our channel. You can click the link to their website in the description to buy all of your magic needs there, and you'll be supporting our channel as well. GameGrid is shipping nationwide, so be sure to take advantage of that. Lastly, we are super excited to finally be reaching 5,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all the support that you guys have shown us. It has been a super fun year for us. We're really excited to hit 5,000 subscribers. And last week, Griffin put out a video announcing a Q&A that we will be doing. You can send us any questions that you have, magic related or not. You can send that to our email which is commandvalleypodcast at gmail.com. It will also be in the description below. And you can also send it to us through Facebook or Twitter. That is probably the best place to send them. But again, you can send them through our email here in the comment section, Twitter, Facebook, what, whatever works for you. Just make sure that we get them. We are super excited to give back to you guys. We'll be recording that video soon. So get your questions in as soon as possible. Thanks so much for all of your support.